everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name's Amanda and in today's video I'm going to share some crystal placement ideas with you all. As we all know Kiki London very recently launched their crystal range and I've been having so much fun playing around with them. They're absolutely beautiful crystals so I thought today's video it would be a great chance to just share some easy but fun crystal ideas. And before I get into the video as well, I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I hope you all enjoy the Christmas break. So as you see there, I did one coat of Blue Serenity. This is such a beautiful blue. I'm now going to come in with the second coat of colour. It is a very, very pigmented colour, but when I'm working and you're going to see a lot of the base, I do always like to pop down a second coat of colour just so you've got a nice crisp base to work on top of. And for the crystals on our first design, I have a Sapphire Stud, Crystal Cut and Aqua Marine Queen. I will leave all of the names of the products I use linked in the description box below just in case I've missed any out. And then I'm also going to be using my No White Rubber Top Coat to apply these crystals along with the Kiki London Dotting Gem Tool. On my palette there as well, I have also popped down some caviar beads because I'm going to be using those in the first design. And as you can see, that beautiful palette, how lovely is this to pop your crystals down on top on this is also from kiki as well so i've applied a layer of my no wipe rubber top coat and i've left that layer of top coat wet so i'm going to pop my crystals down into that wet top coat and because it's wet it makes it such an easy product to apply your crystals into you're able to move them around as much as you like and they're not going to set in place until you pop your nail into cure now one thing i do want to mention is you don't want to apply the top coat too thick because otherwise that can cause your crystals to run and move around a little bit too much and it can also cause curing issues if you are applying it too thick it is already a thicker top coat compared to the regular top coat just so just bear that in mind when you're applying it kind of like i like to kind of brush it out and get a nice even coat down now of course your crystals when you're doing a more intricate design say for example like this one we're going to be doing a snowflake here by the way when you're doing a more intricate design like this and you're adding quite a few crystals onto the nail they are going to move around a little bit and that's okay you can nudge them all back into place before you pop them into cure i like to just get my crystals down roughly in place and then faff around spending a little bit of time making sure they're perfect right before i pop the nail into the lamp so all i've done here is i've popped a larger crystal down into the middle so i went for the sapphire stud and then i've come around the edges with aquamarine queen and here and there I'm coming out so you know I'm creating that snowflake shake shape <laughs> and I've used a few of the caviar bees to help do that just because it helps bulk out the design a little bit and they're quite small and certain parts of the snowflake I didn't want to look too bulky now with your caviar beads I kind of just make sure I've got a teeny tiny amount of top coat on the end of my dotting tool and I pick them up with that as they are very fiddly to do however when you're picking up your crystals you do want to make sure you've got no top coat on the end of your dotting tool as it can dull their shine a little bit if you've got any top coat on the top of your crystals so do just bear that in mind you can't always notice it on camera but I do wipe off the end of my crystal tool either on the edge of my glove or on an outer alcohol pad just to make sure it's clean now and then when I'm picking up my crystals. So I'm just working outwards with that snowflake trying to create the the, I don't know what you'd call it the spiny bits of the snowflake shape but I'm just working outwards before doing the design I had a quick look at snowflake shapes and snowflake crystal nails and things like that just to get some inspiration but then as I was doing it on the now I was kind of just winging it you can play around and have so much fun with crystals creating designs that are kind of made up as you go you don't necessarily need to copy an image and this is what I mean by the caviar beads. Because they're that bit smaller, I'm able to get them in some of the gaps and it helps just bulk out the design a little bit, but they don't shine like crystals. So that's why I wanna make sure I've got lots of the crystals down on the snowflake as well. Now, another tip that I wanted to mention is if you're finding it tricky, to find your crystals or work out the shape on the nail, then what I would do is 
do your crystal placement on your palette or on a piece of paper even so like how i'm doing it here on the nail you could do that on a palette with no products obviously and then you're able to pick up those pieces and place them down without having to look for the crystal sizes or the colors that you need and then obviously you've got a bit more time to play around with it so that's one thing that i sometimes do if i'm struggling with what to do with crystals especially with things like the snowflake here because you're actually creating a shape i'll just create it on my palette to begin with have a play around to see what i like and what looks good and then i've got it basically mapped out but on my palette and i've just got to pick those crystals up and place them onto the nail so it's a great way to practice especially if you're doing designs on yourself or on display tips it gives you a bit of practice before going in and doing it on a client so once I was happy of how all of those crystals on my snowflake were placed, I popped them into Cure and how beautiful does the Sapphire Stud and the Aquamarine Queen look together. I absolutely loved it. On to the next design, I've got the beautiful blush. This is one of my favorite nude colors. It's such a gorgeous one. And one of the things I love personally doing with crystals is having a nude matte base and then the crystals. So that was what I decided to do here because it doesn't necessarily matter what you do with the crystals. They just look absolutely beautiful against a nude matte base. So I'm gonna do my two coats of blush, curing each coat for 30 seconds. And just how gorgeous does this colour look? I always find that I feel nudes are very popular in January, February. So that's another reason why I want to include it in today's video. So then on to our crystals. So I have Crystal AB and then I have Antique Rose. Now AB is one of my go-to crystals. Whenever I do crystal designs, I find that they're a necessity. Even if you're using coloured crystals, you need to have some AB ones in there because they just reflect absolutely beautifully. Beautifully. I felt as though they worked so well with the antique rose though especially with the antique rose against this blush base as well it looked really pretty so on to this crystal placement I'm going to do a crystal cluster up in one side of the cuticle area so you could do this on either side of the cuticle or you could even go all the way around the cuticle it's kind of personal preference and again it's personal preference on how many you want to apply you could keep it quite subtle and just have a couple of crystals crystals up in the cuticle even two or three looks really pretty especially on short nails where I was working on a longer design I decided to go a little bit more OTT and add in a few more crystals but the reason why these little cuticle clusters are so so easy to do is because you don't necessarily need to stress too much about what size crystals you're using or what colors so if you've got a couple of different colors you can just mix them up in the crystal cluster and it just looks beautiful so here all I'm doing is I'm picking out random sizes and trying to alternate between the two colors so that there's a roughly the same amount of antique rose and the AB and I want a few of the larger crystals in there because they do make it look a little bit more glam and like I said I want to go for that bit more of an over the top design. Now if you watched the previous Kiki London video that I uploaded showing all the crystals I showed you guys that I like to mix my sizes into the same pot so that's why here on my palette I've got a mix of all the sizes there. I just find this a lot easier especially when doing things like crystal clusters like this because you can just rummage around and find the shapes or sorry the sizes that you need i personally in crystal clusters find it looks a lot better if you have a mix of different sizes and that was one of the reasons why I loved that the Kiki London crystal packs did come in a variety of sizes because you had larger ones right down to teeny tiny ones and they just work perfectly in your crystal clusters. So as you can see here, as we're sort of starting to get to where I want my edge of my crystal cluster to be, I'm kind of trying to make sure that both of the ends come out to roughly the same distance. So I want to take one end roughly into the middle of the nail and then I want that other end to be roughly the same length just because it all looks a little bit more appealing to the eye and then I'm going to kind of round it off a little bit but I do want the edge to look uneven because I feel as though that looks a lot nicer with crystals rather than having this perfect round edge so that's why it kind of goes off into that pointed pit part into the middle of the cluster now it is a little bit hard to see the crystals like this on the video but I do show you some up close snap clips and you can kind of then see how beautiful the colours look together and how beautiful they reflect the light. 
I love the dotting tool end of my crystal tool to sort through my crystals. As you can see here, you can really move the crystals around and that's why I love having them down on a flat palette as well because you're able to really move them around, find the ones that you want and it just makes it a whole lot easier having that dotting tool end on the end of your gem tool. I use the waxy end to actually pick up my crystals but you'll see I'm using the dotting tool end all of the time to move them into place and also look through my crystals. I will pick some of the smaller ones up with that end as well. Also there you see that I just used my thumb just to push those crystals on a little bit. Where I'd been nudging them around, the ones on the edge were ever so slightly coming off the nail. So I just was pushing them back into place. And then I cured that rubber top coat for 60 seconds. And how beautiful does it look over a glossy base? I do love them over a glossy base. But like I said, there's just something about crystals and a matte base. So I had to come in with the Kiki London No Wipe Matte Top Coat. Now to begin with, I'm applying a majority of my matte top coat to the part of the nail where there's no crystals. So I'm applying the bulk of that product down the nail. I wanna make sure I've only got a little bit of product on my brush when I'm coming up against those crystals. You do not want to get any top coat on your crystals, especially the matte top coat, because it's going to dull their shine. So I'm pushing up against it with my brush, but I'm re being really careful not to touch those crystals. If you feel that you're not confident doing this, you can come around the edges of the crystals with your detail brush and the matte top coat just to make sure you don't get any on your crystals. And how beautiful does that look? It's my favorite now in today's design. On to the third and final design, I'm gonna come in with Ballet Charm. This is another one of my favorite nudes. And because I'm uploading this video on Christmas Eve, I didn't wanna to go too Christmassy with the designs because we're not gonna obviously be doing Christmas now as much now. So I wanted to keep everything a little bit more suitable for the new year. So that's why I went for the nudes and the blue. Let me know what you think of these colors in the comments below. And another thing that I wanted to mention is if you have any requests, any colors that you want to see used, or any Nala items that you want to see used if you have any things that you're struggling with and you'd like to see how I do it in a video do pop it in the comments below and I will do my best to do a video showing either those colors or what it is you're struggling with and sharing any tips or tricks that I have now for this crystal design I have pink sapphire and crystal AB again because like I said I feel as though you've got to have crystal AB in pretty much every design they just complement each of the colors beautifully so I have popped pink sapphire down first of all and what I want to do with this one is I love this jeweled effect with crystals where you add the caviar beads between your crystals and it kind of looks like do you know when you have a ring and you've got the little claw bits that hold the crystal in place that's the effect that I kind of wanted to go for with this design but I'm just going to do pretty much a straight swoop going swoosh sorry going across the nail now you could do this in any way you could go around the cuticle area with this you don't necessarily have to keep it in a straight swoosh but just adding in those caviar beads between your crystals really helps set it off I'm really sorry you can see my hair in this shot um it was really hard like when I do crystal nails I get so close to the nail to see what I'm doing that I kept forgetting that I was recording and my hair kept coming in the shot so what I'm doing is I've placed down the pink in the center and then my two caviar beads and then either side I've done a b and also what I've done is made sure the sizes match up so I've got my larger crystal in the center and then the next two ABs I've made sure that they're the same size and then the same goes for the next two pink sapphires I've made sure they're the same size. So again if you've done what I've done and mixed your crystals up then you can always sort out the sizes that you want before you start placing them down on the nail but I find it easy enough to find them anyway. And just, I think it just looks so pretty having those two colors together alternating like that. It kind of reminds me of, do you know, um, the diamond rings or the gemstone rings you get and you might have like an emerald in the center and then two clear diamonds or crystals, whatever your choice is, either side. I love that look. I think it looks really pretty alternating between the colored and then the AB. Just look how beautiful as well that they catch and reflect the light. It looks so much better off video as well. I do sometimes feel with crystals and video in, you just, they just don't always give justice to the crystals. These shine absolutely beautiful. 
So again, I'd pop that rubber top coat in to cure for 60 seconds and that was that design finished. So there we go, we have three simple but super pretty crystal placement designs. Please do let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a lovely new year. Take care, lots of love, and I shall see you all again in the next video. Bye-bye.